Thanks for checking out this video. So this is a no spoiler review for season two, episode four of Creep Show on Shutter. Now, if you don't know, I am doing no spoiler reviews for every episode, and each episode includes two stories. Uh, and then at the end, actually, just so you know, I will be doing an entire video that is a full ranking. Uh, I think in the same video, I'm going to do a ranking of just the season two stories and then an overall ranking of seasons one and two and all the specials kind of put together just my feelings on it but i don't know if i'm going to separate those two videos or not so if you want to put your feedback in the comments on how you think i should do it all as one or as two i will listen anyway uh season two episode four is coming to shutter on thursday april 22nd and like i said this is no spoilers so no problem i'm not allowed to do spoilers since i'm putting this out ahead of time and for that reason, there will be no synopses for the stories. But I will tell you some things to get you ready for them. Now, the first story is called Pipe Screams. Now, this one's directed by Joe Lynch, who also did the one, uh, The Right Snuff, which was in episode three of season two. And he's directed such things as Wrong Turn 2, Dead End, Chillerama, Knights of Badassdom, Mayhem, and like I said, The Right Snuff. This one's written written by Daniel Kraus, and I actually couldn't find any previous stuff on Daniel Kraus. I don't know if he's just kind of like hidden in IMDb somewhere, but um, Daniel Kraus, if you end up seeing this, put it in the comments. Uh, what else have you done? Because uh, I think you did a pretty nice job with the story, I will say that. The script is nice with this one. I, I did enjoy this one. Uh, stars Barbara Crampton. She's the biggest name in this one. Uh, if you're big into horror like me, and I'm assuming you are if you're watching this, you probably love Barbara Crampton. She is a wonderful person. I've never met her or had any inter interactions with her, but based off social media and what I've seen of her, um, she seems like a really awesome person, and she does a fun job in this uh, story for Creep Show. Um, the, the big thing is that she makes her role feel fun. Like, you feel like she had a good time on set, and it's just like she's throwing a lot into her character in this, and it's very enjoyable. Like, you feel her energy, you feel her excitement, you feel her having a good time, and that makes you have a good time. And in general, I think this story is a good time. There's a lot of fun to it, there are some funny aspects to it. There's some good chaotic moments in it that keeps it very upbeat and really moving. So pacing is really good, which I feel like a lot of the stories have had some pacing issues. Well, maybe not a lot, but a chunk of them have had some pacing issues. This one certainly does not have that problem. Really keeps you interested and engaged, and I, I dig it. It's good. It's not like the best thing ever, but I dig it. Now, obviously, you know Barbara Crampton. I'll just tell you some of my favorite things that she's been in. Chopping Mall, Reanimator, From Beyond... She's been in a lot, though, and uh, she's in the film with Larry Fessenden and Jacob's wife, which Shudder got the rights to, so at some point, they will have that available for me for a screener, and I'll have a no-spoilers review for that film before it hits Shudder. Now, I'm not sure when it'll hit Shudder. It's definitely not going to be May, because they've already said when, you know, what's coming out in May, so maybe June? I assume probably June. We'll see. Anyway, uh, I, I also need to call out for this story Eric Edelston. You know, I saw him in there and I was like, by name, I was like, I don't know who this guy is. But when I saw him, I'm like, he looks so familiar to me. So you've probably seen him in a few things. So I wrote down some of the things that you might recognize him from. He was in The Hills Have Eyes 2, Jurassic World, Patchwork. He was in the 2017 season of Twin Peaks. Uh, he was in, on Drunk History, which I saw him on Drunk History but I know him best from this last one, which is my favorite, and I plan to purchase this movie because this movie is awesome. If you've seen it, you know. It's awesome. Green Room, the A24 film Green Room. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, wonderful film, and he does a great job in it. And he, he does a great job in this, too. That's why I wanted to shout his name out. He did a really good job in this one. Okay, so I like the way the comic panels get used for this particular story, the way it kind of goes into it leads into the story and it does it in a good way it's a nice transition i like that use right there uh barbara's performance like i said so great but it bears repeating but also eric eric did such a nice job with this and his role wasn't super easy either he had some real challenges that he had to deal with so good job on that sound design is really good on this one it does stand out too i really like the sound design i feel like this is the first of the stories that I really, really noticed the sound design. So that 
says even better things about the sound design, in my opinion. So nice work on that. Uh, like I said, moves at a really good pace. It keeps you engaged because you also don't really know where this is going. It's such an intriguing setup for the story, and it moves at such a good pace, and it gives you enough little pieces as it goes that you're just like, I have no clue where this is headed, and I'm excited to find out where. And yeah, I, I like that. That's good writing. Solid practical effects in this one. There are some nice practical effects moments. There's a little bit of CGI here or there, but it was used well. It's not overused, and it's kind of integrated, so you can't really tell as much. So good on that. Like I said, fun, funny, and chaotic. It's a good one. And then overall, uh, makes a very rele relevant point and is done in an interesting way. Uh, and the ending is okay. I do feel like the ending, I wanted a little bit more out of it, but it's still fine. There's no like big problem with the ending to it. So overall, um, I did enjoy this one. I thought it was a good time and yeah, I like it. So overall, uh, I'm giving it out of five stars with half stars in play. I'm actually going to give this one a three and a half star rating. I did quite enjoy this one as far as these creep show uh, shows go. So yeah, there you go. Three and a half on pipe screams. Hope you guys enjoy it. Now, the next one, I didn't like as much. Now, this one is Within the Walls of Madness. I didn't hate it, but there are some things that kind of bother me about it a little bit. So there's good and bad with this one. This one's directed by John Harrison, who's done a bunch of episodes for Tales from the Dark Side. I'm sure people know about that. Uh, he did some Tales from the Crypt. And then he also did a bunch of episodes, or a bunch of stories of Creepshow, including... Um, Tales, or I'm sorry, The House of the Head, which was has been one of my favorite ones, All Hallows' Eve, Night of the Paw, and Times is Tough in Musky Holler. So he's done a good amount of this stuff. Uh, this one was written by John Esposito, who's also written scripts for Graveyard Shift, Tale of the Mummy, uh, a bunch of the Walking Dead webisodes. I don't watch Walking Dead, so I'm not familiar if they were good or not. And then he's also written scripts for the Creep Show stories, Model Kid and Knight of the Paw. So there you go. No big stars in this one. Overall, the acting is fine. It's it's neither here nor there. It, it kind of hits that kind of middle middle part where it's not doing anything bad to the story, but it's also not really in, particularly enhancing it. It's fine. It's serviceable. There's there's no issue right there. There aren't any big names. You're not probably not going to recognize anyone. Just saying. Uh, there's some cutting in and out of lights that end up being used two separate times within the story, like a kind of flashing thing. So people who have epilepsy, be warned. Um, or if people are just sensitive to that stuff, be warned. Because with me, when there's a lot of that, like there, there's A, a potential for a migraine to be tripped off, uh, to be started for me, basically. Um, that did not happen, thankfully. But it's annoying, and the thing is, it keeps you from really seeing what's going on. I assume that was kind of the idea, because they wanted to kind of obfuscate something, and I get that story-wise, but it's annoying, it doesn't actually look good, and it goes on too long. I thought it was a bad choice. Uh, there are other things you can do, just have it kind of low lighting. I didn't like it. I, I, I just did not like that aspect, but you move past it. You know, it doesn't destroy the, the story. I like the set design in this. The set design is really cool. It gives you a lot to look at. And there are kind of two main locations that look particularly cool. And while they have scenes in those locations, you are kind of like looking around and being like, man, this looks quite nice. So very nice on the set design. It reminds me of, even though I didn't really like it, the, um, the right snuff story, the set design on that was really cool. And there was a lot of cool stuff to look at. So it kind of reminded me a bit of that. Uh, there's some cool camera work in this too. So nice work on the directing John Harrison. Um, there were some really inspired camera movements and some really inspired shots in this one. So the directing really did stand out for this one. And that made me happy. The comic panel is used pretty well. Well, I guess it's used well, but it's also used very strategically with this story to keep the budget down. Like you can tell when it would be Something that, you know, you don't necessarily have to shoot if you have the access to using these uh, comic panels. Uh, and I, I just thought it was well integrated. And it's stuff that you as a viewer don't really miss. Like, it's fine that they're done as, as comic panels. So smartly, smartly used there. The title does hint at the inspiration for the story. I'm not going to go further than, than that. And uh, when you see it, you'll probably get it. You'll be like, oh, I see where, okay, got it. 
So, um, yeah. Uh, it feels slow, unfortunately. And the in the ending isn't bad, but the CGI used in the ending is bad. So that kind of messes with my opinion of how the film wraps up. Because you're very distracted by how terrible the CGI looks. It looks bad. It's bad. Um, I don't know if it was intentionally supposed to look bad to, like, intentionally look really wonky for, like, some sort of comedic aspect to it. I don't know. I don't know if this is, like, a tongue-in-cheek thing, but it doesn't look good. I did not like it at all. It's distracting from the actual ending, which the story-wise, story like I was saying, like, it's not a bad ending. It's a decent ending to it. Overall story, quite interesting, too, but it was slow. The CGI is terrible, you know. Just saying. So I was a little let down with that. Now, overall, I don't want to kill this on my rating because there is some good stuff at play here. So I ended up landing in the middle. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm doing two and a half on this one. Um, yeah. So overall, I feel like this episode is feels very much like episode two of season two, like on that level, in my opinion, maybe a little bit higher overall, I think, maybe a little bit higher, so, yeah, but anyway, I'd love to see what everyone else has to say, once you've seen it, go ahead, you can put some comments down here, spoilers, go ahead, spoilers in the comments, as long as the show's already been on Shutter, which is April 22nd, then we can talk about it, what did you think, did you love it, did you hate it, are you happy with where things are going, I think this is a good rebound, in my opinion, overall, sent, uh, over the last episode, so, yeah, I'm still having fun. I love I love just the mixed bag of stories, and it bears repeating. If there are stories you don't like, you're not investing a lot of time, so it's fine. Like, it's easy for me to just be like, oh, I'm good. I didn't like that one. On to the next. And I've had plenty that I actually do like, so yeah. Anyway, thanks for checking this out. Do me a quick favor, though. Hit that subscribe button if you like this review or any video I've ever done, because I'm not just doing reviews. I'm doing you know, unboxings and haul videos and opinion pieces and stuff like that. Um, so please throw me a subscription here. We'll grow this nerdy horror community together. Also hit the notification bell button. That way you'll know when I'm putting up new videos. And yeah, other than that, like I said, thanks for checking this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.